Yo, what's good with y'all niggas, man? My name is Devin Wills, and you may have seen me on things like the FBI's watch list, you know, with captions like, don't allow around children. I perform at comedy clubs, venues, bars, and children's birthday parties. Well, actually, they don't let me do the children's birthday parties anymore. But hey, man, I got another reaction coming for y'all. Last night, I was going to upload a reaction to Kevin Hart's new stand-up, but... YouTube blocked the motherfucker. I'm gonna record some new shit. Louis C.K. roasting black people for eight minutes. This should be good. I love a good nigga joke. You know I love jokes about stereotypes and everything. It's all fun. It's all cool. Unless you do, unless you say like some blatant racist shit like oh you you don't take care of your kids or something like that. Then then it gets a little stupid. But if it's funny, it's funny, and that's what I'm here to see. So without further ado, let's get right into this shit. Here's a joke. Why did the chicken cross the road? Because uh, there was a black guy walking behind him. Yeah. He was he was nervous. We, we, he was we've heard this before. This chicken, and he was like, I feel like he's following me, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so then he thought, maybe if I cross the road, then if he crossed the road, he's definitely following me. So he crossed the road, and the black guy went home. He's living his life. And the chicken hmm. was like, I'm such a racist. <laughs> and he felt, felt bad. About a month later, a black guy ate the chicken. A uh, different black guy. I'm just telling you what happened. By the way, don't be upset because this is not a racist joke. This joke is not racist. The chicken was racist. The chicken was definitely racist. But that's chickens. Chickens are very closed down and suspicious and prejudiced. You kind of can't blame them considering that their species murder rate is 100%. That's why chickens are like... There's always excuses for racism. Oh, this nigga's you young know, as fuck right here. I met this guy from the South, and he was really racist. And I asked his friend, why is he like that? And his friend goes, oh, well, he was born on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of farm was that, you know? <laughs> Maybe the animals were racist, uh -huh. you know? He's walking around the animals, are like, Jews. <laughs> Black. Black. <laughs> 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 so I have mild racism. It's benign. It's not aggressive. Is this it's not even goals? negative racism. It's mild racism. I'll give you an example. Okay, like see, like if I go uh, to a, a pizza place I've never been to before, okay. and it's run by four black women, I'll go like, uh, hmm. <laughs> see, it's very mild. It's extremely <laughs> mild racism. I'll notice that. You don't usually see that four black women running. I do that shit sometimes. I'm right. Unless, yeah, unless it's so. called four black girls pizza or something like that. Like that's the whole point of the place. Wow. Hey, here's some interesting news yeah, yeah. about the Jew oh. thing. Hey. I, I do yes. know where the where the term okay. kite came from, by the way. Ah, oh, derogatory term for Jewish yes, people. I do, where I, that's I do know where that came said, from. Where? It, it is the when, word. when people used Slow. to come uh, over on the uh, you know in the ships that, on Ellis Island. A lot of people couldn't write English. So they used to make their mark, and the Jews' mark was a circle. And uh, the circle is called Keikel. So that's what they were just shorting it to Kike. The oh, guys oh, coming yeah? in and say, here's another Kike once they've seen the, the, the circle. You know stamp. where Nigger came from <laughs> originally? <laughs> there was some black guy being a Nigger. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Louis said that? <laughs> he was being a real nigger, and somebody said, what a nigger. And that's where it started. It just was what a, the fuck? It was a feeling. Yeah. He was being a nigger, <laughs> and somebody said, they're going nigger. Mild racism. If I say I'm in a hospital, and the doctor comes in to treat me, and the doctor's from China or India, I'll think, well, good, good. <laughs> good, more of that. Why not? It's very mild racism. Here's another example. If I'm in a gas station late at night, and uh, a young a young man comes in wearing a hooded sweatshirt. If he's white, I'll think, oh, he's an athlete. If he's black, unless he has a big smile on his face, then I become mildly racist, and this is what I think. I think, that's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen. No, of course I'm fine. Why did I even think that for a second? <laughs> But people are too afraid. That of is mild racism. Like is when you're trying to convince yourself you're not racist. No, you, like, you can't go to Harlem 
because as soon as you get there, they kill you. Honestly, <laughs> it's just the way. As soon as you arrive, they stab you in the face. Uh -huh. <laughs> you just get murdered, which is stupid. I've been to Harlem, and people there, they have a lot of stuff to do. You know, they're busy. They're not just standing around waiting for lost white people to kill all day. <laughs> 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 right outside the subway entrance goes, come on, come on! I just want to say I'm not trying to say that if you're white, you can't complain. Louis has a big-ass head. If you're black, you get to complain more. Right, right. Because <laughs> you can't... There you go. Don't, don't tell the band that. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. That's a big-ass band. You can't, you can't, Almost as big as Louis' fucking head. God damn historical context away from them and right. everybody wants us to like white people are always like come on it wasn't us like they want black people to forget everything like every year white people add a hundred years to how long ago slavery was i've seen this clip before i've heard educated white people say slavery was 400 years ago no it very wasn't it was 140 years ago that's two 70 year old ladies living and dying back to back <laughs> That's how recently <laughs> you could buy a guy. That's it. And it's not like slavery ended and then everything has been amazing. <laughs> like it just... Oh, glad that's over. Oh, yeah. It just ended like a clean <laughs> where you don't have to wipe. Just boom. And then it's just been parades <laughs> and friends. I've seen, I've seen this. Exactly. You got to... You gotta remember that if you meet a black person, they have gray hair, they remember a time they weren't allowed to use a certain toilet. So give them a little, you know, time to be cranky. And by the way, white people have our own thing that we, yeah. stuff that we went sure, through sure. That, that hurt us that we have to cope with. Like when they took our slaves away. That was really hard. <laughs> and we're I still, forgot about that part of your clip. <laughs> so it's pretty even. <laughs> so, it's, so it's even. Yeah. It's even. Please. At um, that's the name of the show at the Improv, Mo Better Mondays. It's an all-black audience, and I had done a show called Chocolate Mo Better Mondays. Mondays. I heard about Laugh that. Laugh Factory, which is an all-black audience, and they invited me because they thought I was black because of my name because I directed Pootie Tang, so people sometimes think I'm black, and so they invited me to that to the show. So I get there, and uh, they go, "Oh, hi." <laughs> <laughs> So I went on, and this is Chocolate Sundays at the Laugh Factory, and it was fucking great. I had a great time because nobody else is trying. They're all up there just acting cool, and I went up there and I tried, and everybody appreciated it. So then, because um, most comedians don't try. I'm not saying because they're there or black, but they were all black and unfunny. Every <laughs> single one of them was black. There are far more unfunny white comedians than, un than unfunny black ones. But every single comedian on that show <laughs> was black and unfunny. Should have been the name of the show. Right? Ah, black and unfunny. That's funny. But you know I what? Was white and hilarious. No, oh, wait a minute. You know what? Nigga. If I get a room, I should have a black comedy night and call it black and unfunny. Thanks to Louis C.K., that nigga might have just sparked the idea. So, you know, privileged and uh, lucky to be white. Uh, it's awesome. It is a very... It, everybody who's white should just wake up and go, I'm fucking white! This is great! <laughs> Shit. I don't have to fucking explain myself ever. I look people in the eye with confidence. Nobody fucks with me. Police protect me. Mm. <laughs> I think that black people, all they can hope for from the cops is that they'll leave them alone. And we actually get to hope that they'll protect us. It's fucking a chasm of difference. On the, and I'm on the greatest side of that cast. I am on the fucking sweet side of that cast. Okay, man. That, yeah, that was some funny ass bits from Louis C.K. Some funny uh black jokes, you know. Uh, luckily none of them was racist, you know. Like, cause. I'm going to say it right now. A lot of white comedians do not know the difference between a racial joke and a racist joke. I'm glad Louis C.K. is brilliant enough to understand the difference between a racial joke and a racist joke. You know what I'm saying? Um, my advice to white comedians is watch the movie American History X. 
If your punchline sounds like anything that Edward Norton's character would agree with, uh, that might be a racist joke, not a racial joke. But hey, man, I enjoyed that. Link in the description for the original video. I'm going to holler at y'all niggas next time.